In this lesson, we want to make a series of random boxes. Uh, as you can see here, I can change the size of the square grid, uh, the number in the UV direction. Uh, then I can control the minimum and maximum of a movement of the boxes in the Z direction, which is obviously their height. Uh, then we will also explain how to rotate the top of the boxes in two directions, the X and the Y uh, axis which you can see uh, you can define the minimum and the maximum uh, of the rotation which is in the minus and positive direction for example it's like from uh, minus 15 to 15 and then we can uh, generate a random seed for that also there is another direction uh, for the rotation and also a random seed for that uh, by changing these uh, directions and rotations you can produce these random boxes and finally bake them in rhino so let's get started from scratch what i want to do is to go to the vector section and select this square grid and put it on the canvas let's just put this at the full names so you can see it here obviously it's in the xy plane uh, because i don't want to make it uh, really complicated i'm going to go to the palms menu and connect a point let's set this point here in rhino uh, to change the location of the xy plane when you connect a point to a plane it's going to be an xy plane obviously then we can control the size so i'm going to give a number slider to the size which is going to change the size of the grid and obviously we need the number of x and y uh, counts so i'm going to say from 1 to maybe 20 and give that to the X and the Y. Now we can control how many cells we need in the XY direction. Let me just make this Rhino a little bit bigger so it's better to understand. Okay, after we produce these cells in the XY direction, uh, what I want to do is to move these cells. If I bake that, you can see that each of them is a square cell uh, because they are in groups for example if I go here you can see it's like uh, 14 groups let me just zoom in here you can see it's like 14 groups which uh, with each group having 11 number of cells that is the reason it's like 14 11 because we don't need that I'm going to right click and flatten this and remember if you don't know about these flatten graph things be sure to watch the data management sections because we have talked about this completely. Uh, okay, we're going to flatten this so all of these 154 cells is in one group. Uh, after we produce that, we want to move that up. We can just double click and search for move and enter or you can go to transform and use this Euclidean move up here. Okay. Uh, we can give that to the geometry we want to move. The direction is going to be obviously a Z direction. And we have to move that up. Oh, uh, if we give this a number slider, that's the easiest thing we can do. We can move that up in, in the same direction for all of the cells. But because we want to move them uh, randomly, uh, I'm going to go to the uh, sets sequence and find this random tool here so i'm going to use a random the first is the range we want to produce a random so to make that even parametric i'm going to go to the math and select a construct domain tool to define the range of the minimum and maximum movement in the z direction so it's obviously maybe between two and 50 and control C control V that's going to define the minimum and the maximum of the random numbers uh, because we have 154 cells uh, that's uh, the number of the random number has to be also the same so I'm going to go to the set and select the list length tool give it to the cells it's going to count the cells and give us a 154 output which is going to go to the number of uh, random uh, inputs we need. Okay, so I'm going to give that to here and give it to the Z direction. And now you can see that you can control the minimum and the maximum. Obviously, if you change the uh, 
domain start and the end it's not going to change the minimum and the maximum it's just going to uh, change the c so it's not really important uh, now we can give a number slider from maybe one to thousand for the c the c is the engine of the random uh, numbers we generate which we can control here let's just make this a little bit bigger and now we have moved them up uh, let's just turn this off so you can see the movements of these cells okay now that we have produced that let me just make this uh, small so we can talk about what's happening here okay even we can just talk about one in one cell so we can really understand what we want to do so what I want to do here is that I want to rotate this uh, surface or, or this cell in two directions one is in the X direction and obviously we want to rotate that randomly and again in the Y direction I want to also uh, rotate that and that's going to give us a sense of random rotation of the top of the boxes so that's the best thing we can do uh, I can just search for rotate 3d or I can go to transform and in the Euclidean you can find rotate 3d uh, I can give the geometry to the geometry uh, obviously we need to rotate that at the center so a trick we can use to extract the xy direction uh, just for educational purposes is to go to uh, curve analyzes and planar or we can go to surface analyzes is planar doesn't really matter uh, but uh, to make it just like easier I usually use a surface is planar what's happening here is that it's going to convert these curves into surfaces and give us the plane we need which is this plane not really that important you can also use the curve analyzes planar if you want to but this is going to be at the corner uh, I found that the is planar of the surface is better because it's going to go at the center of the cells just a quick trick we can use now we can go to the vector and use this deconstruct plane that means that we want to deconstruct this plane into its center x y and z direction Okay, now we are ready to rotate the cell. Uh, we want to rotate the cell from this center in this direction. Default is 90 degrees, so I'm going to right click and make this degrees. Again, if I give this a number slider, you can see that I am rotating this along the X axis. Just make this plane a little bit bigger that is obviously the x-axis because we need a random number here again we just have to copy this part Control c Control v bring it up here this is the beauty of grasshopper you just have to define the minimum and the maximum uh, of the rotation because i want to say that uh, if we want to rotate around the x-axis uh, maybe we want to say from minus 20 degrees to 20 degrees right uh, we have to just give this a one number so to make it easier I'm going to say from 0 to maybe 40 degrees but when we give this a number say it's from minus in the expression minus x to plus x so it's like minus 7 to plus 7 uh, the number of the length is okay the random seed is ready to use and we can give it to here so if I just turn off the base cell, you can see that we can rotate this in the X direction. Now we have to also rotate that again. Copy paste this, give this geometry to here. The center is the same. The axis is going to be the Y. And this time I'm going to give a seed engine to this angle because the first one is a random seed for the first one and now we can obviously turn everything off and this one you can see it's in the y direction now let's just increase the number of the cells the minimum maximum of the movement Uh, 
let's bring the base cells in a curve at the end and also the rotated cells here at the end. Uh, now we have to connect them together. Again, if you don't know about the data management, when we have two set of curves or three set of curves, we usually graft each of them, simplify, and then bring them into one curve with a shift key and check that out if that we have a group of two. So if you have three set of cells, remember to graph that and simplify. Again, we have three and now it's ready to just loft them together, right? because lofting is going to happen in each of these groups. So I'm going to go to the surface, use the loft. And now we can also cap the holes in the utility and we are good to go. If I bake that, you can see that we have these random boxes really cool we can also connect the display custom preview to the end i usually also use surface analyzers b-rep wireframe to extract the edges just for visualization and now we can control the minimum and the maximum of the first rotation random seed again the minimum rotation of the y direction a random seed and finally random for the movement in the z direction and also the minimum and the maximum. We can also bring that a little bit down if we don't want that much. If it's the same, it's going to uh, at the same height, it's going to be rotated. Okay, you can also use that technique if you want to. Uh, we can also control the number of the x, y, and obviously use that in our project. If you want to, you can also use that as a, take that 90 degrees, maybe it's a facade. A building, something like that. Uh, if you want to make that a little bit smaller, maybe we can use this cells, just for those who want to make that another step here and connect all the curves to the inputs we had it here we had it here and we had it here okay and what i want to do here is to offset them inside so i'm going to go to the curve use the offset curve distance expression minus x so it goes inside and just put that a number slightly and if I give that to here just remember to flatten this so it doesn't affect our algorithm can have a gap and here we go we just have those cells and we can produce cells okay i hope this tutorial was useful thanks for watching and see you next time bye